Welkom terug bij die groot ontbijt. Een baie ernstige onderwerp. Uh, brein gewasse. Uh, uh, dit is een ding wat die mense graag oor gesels nie, maar iets wat allemaal van moet weet, en wat van mense bewust moet wees. Die um, brain tumor and trans... Sjoe, ek mooi praat. Brain, Engelse stem. Brain tumor and translational neuroscience center by die Universiteit van Pretoria. Uh, is op die punt om wel, wel is bezig om methodes van diagnose te analyseer en, en, en die mekaar op te weeg. Vir spesifiek is het kom by brein gewas diagnose. En ons selfs verbore met prof, professor Llewellyn Padayachi, hy is die hoof van die uh, neurochirurgie by die universiteit, en ons praat bykie spesifiek oor die uh, diagnose methodes en die nieuwe plannen wat leed en ook die centrum self. Good morning, prof. Morning. It's lovely having you here this Thanks morning. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a rather hefty subject, uh, and, and, and also emotional. Uh, it's, it must be tough specializing in a field that has so much emotion attached to it. There are a lot of people suffering from, or family members suffering from brain tumors that are, that are, that are really impacted extremely by this. No, no, for sure. So, so thanks again for the opportunity to, to talk a little bit about what we do. So really our center is based in the Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Pretoria. Mm. And like you say, Brain Tumor and Translational Neuroscience Center. So as the name suggests, we're brain tumor centric, but looking at expanding our research as translational neuroscience. So how the brain network is affected by brain tumors and hoping to discover more about how it functions because of the presence of brain tumors. Just to come back to your point about emotion, so I'm a pediatric neurosurgeon, so I treat children mostly. So if you talk about emotion and brain tumors, probably doesn't get more than children with, with brain tumors. Yes. I mean, the commonest question there is, is why, right? Why, yeah, why, why? Have brain tumors? What is the rate of incidences with regards to brain tumors in South Africa and, and perhaps across the world? So, so to answer that question properly is why we started putting together a center like this because it allows us to collect data in a more systematic way. Unfortunately, look, we, we have data that, that is reasonably usable but can be collected better. So the answer to that is a bit vague, right? We always use, you know, data that we, we extrapolate from, from, from Europe and from, you know, North America. But it's the second most common cancer in children. The, 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 the most common solid cancer, so, you know, an actual tumor. People don't quite sort of understand that. So we, we met with the National Cancer Research Initiative that, that started off at, at Pretoria and is looking to build this beyond just brain tumors. And when we said that, they were also a little bit sort of surprised. It, it, it's, it's amazing how people underscore the incidence of, of brain tumors. Uh, when, we, when it comes to, to, to neurosurgeons mm. on the African continent specifically, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do we match up to the rest of the world? So world mapper, probably the best way to answer that, plots those sorts of numbers and then corrects the, you know, the continental layout. And when you compare that uh, to the WHO uh, suggestion for number of neurosurgeons per population, Africa becomes a skinny little line, you know, if you compare it to an over inflated North America, Europe, or even Asia. So, so that, that brings it into perspective, you know, the number of neurosurgeons. Look in South Africa, in Egypt, in Nigeria, it's better. Mm. But those numbers sort of, you know, conflate the rest of, of Africa. So regions of West and East Africa really have one neurosurgeon in the whole country if they're lucky. Wow. wow. I am also one of those people who are quite shocked when you just said second most common cancer with regards to kids. I also didn't know that. Why is it that brain tumors perhaps are so difficult to pick up? Why is it mm. such a challenge for modern medicine, specifically brain tumors? So that's the question really, right? So, so I, I, I think the best way for me to answer that is if you look at medicine, one of the biggest advances we've made is one of the simplest. So a thermometer measures your temperature and then you know you're sick. Yes. Right, then you go and see the doctor and they do a chest x-ray and pick up perhaps, you know, you've got a pneumonia. For, for raised intracranial pressure, so the skull is a fixed cavity. So any abnormal growth squashes the rest of the brain, pushes the pressure up. We don't have a reliable, non-invasive way of picking that up. Wow. So a thermometer for the brain, yes. which is astounding really in this day and age. So we've got a, if the standard way neurosurgeons do that is you drill a hole, put a catheter in and measure the actual pressure, which you can't really do in a rural clinic. So our neuro-ophthalmology laboratory, and this is building on work that I've been involved in for the last 15 odd years now, from, from Cape Town up to, up to the University of Pretoria, is looking at expanding that. So ultimately, if we can scan the eye and 
pick up that your pressure is raised, then you know there's a problem. Because little kids present with nausea, vomiting, headache. I mean, that's a very standard mm. issue. So for a GP to pick up a brain tumor based on a child who's vomited a few times or had a bit of a headache, it's really it's a really difficult, difficult ask. So, so a lot of these are missed. But if we can scan the eye and pick up, listen, together with that, the pressure is up, like your thermometer picks up a raised temperature. That's what our whole sort of research drive is with the neuro-ophthalmology laboratory. We started off just with ultrasound scans, yes. and we refined that somehow or somewhat. But now we're doing pupil, pupillometry, infrared pupillometry, intraocular pressure, something called optical coherence tomography, scanning of the back of the eye. So all of that together. And this is a work in progress. It'll take a few years, but we've got a good background. And that, that's sort of the core of our center. The rest is epidemiology, intraoperative monitoring and imaging. So a whole system all the way to neuro rehabilitation. So our vision for this is good. And that's why this is, is, you know, is a really good opportunity to create some visibility, because obviously we need to raise, fu raise funding mm -hmm. for that within a research capacity as well. Uh, when it comes to diagnosing specific types of tumors yep. in the brain, uh, um, this isn't type specific. <clears throat> this is this is in general just identifying that the fact there is a tumor or is it type specific? No, 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 no. So th that, th that, that's exactly what this does. So the best predictor of outcome, irrespective of the tumor, is early diagnosis. Yeah. So okay. we missed that. So by the time you pick the tumor up, and as a surgeon, obviously, we want to remove it and do the best maximal safe resection and leave the child or the adult better, right? Mm. But the best predictor of outcome is early diagnosis. So every time a child or an adult presents to us, they've always presented later than they should have, if that makes any yeah. sense. We should have picked it up earlier. Coming back to your point, so molecular genetic profiling of tumors has become very much the flavor now. Unfortunately, South Africa lags a bit, and we've tried over the last decade to catch up. But, you know, for a whole lot of reasons, we're not where we should be. So. I mean, to come back to your point, we can streamline the diagnosis of tumors that you can almost tailor the treatment specifically to that. Wow. Because you can genetically profile them, mm -hmm. you know, and this is the kind of treatment you have, which is great once you've diagnosed the tumor and then has an impact on outcome. But our goal is always to pick it up early. earlier. Yeah. That's where we fall short. It's a big, big gap. And we're focusing a lot of our research on that. Research centre and accessibility, and you were also speaking about, you know, the invasiveness and in special and rural areas. And, and so now, obviously, it's focused where you at at the research centre. Mm. But how accessible is it for people throughout the country then, or is this something you want to develop and be able to take out later? Yeah. So, so that really is the core of this whole discussion. It is, in my opinion. You know, it's really inaccessible. So you need an MRI scan effectively yeah. to diagnose a brain tumor. And if we look at the spread of MRI scans across Africa, it's appallingly bad. Yeah. So rather than saying you need to have an MRI scan, what we're saying is we'll simplify the diagnostic tool, right? Both in its uh, accessibility, but also in its ease of use, right? Yeah. It's pointless if we have a very accessible tool that's esoteric in terms of who can use it. Yeah. So we've ref we're trying to, to, to kind of bring down the, the, the simplicity, like I said, like a thermometer. So, you know, a nurse in a rural clinic in Uganda can do it the same way as a complex university-based system where you scan the eye, it gives you a red, green, or blue, to, uh, sorry, um, what's this, a traffic light, a red, or, or orange, or green, you know, that, yes. that sort of thing. And, you know, you know there's a problem. So if you can simplify that point-of-care diagnostic to that point, these kids then get referred earlier to a center where they can mm -hmm. have a CT scan or an MRI scan. Oftentimes, when they get to us, they have these huge tumors. Every huge tumor at some point was, was smaller. So we're saying along that curve, just pick it up earlier. And then the type of tumors, basically, some are very uh, malignant, some are benign. That you can't really control. Yes. But the diagnostic curve, we can shift that significantly back. Magnificent. Uh, yeah. It's a lovely early diagnosis mm -hmm. tool. Yeah. Uh, it, it would be wonderful. Thank you so much for telling us yeah. more about the work that the center is doing, Prof. Yeah. And it's been lovely having you here. Thanks. It's been a pleasure on my side, too. Ja, daar zei het. Dat is ongelooflijk, nee? professor Llewellyn Pariachi van die Brain Tumor and Translational Neuroscience Center bij de Universiteit van Pretoria. Het is ongelooflijk om te denken dat mens dalk een breingewas vroeger kan identificeren, wat gewoonlijk altijd maar te laat is, en dat mens dan dalk, dalk kan reageren.